for the second half, uh, we, we battled, showed a competitive spirit. Um, but once again, credit South Florida. I thought that their guard play was, was phenomenal. Um, Youngblood and Miguel made tough shot after tough shot. Um, now, to me, jump shooters, we got beat on the, the, the defensive boards, and that, that's usually the, uh, the recipe for, for defeating us. Coach, you're down 25, but then the game comes down to the wire. Is, is there anything encouraging to kind of take away from the game? Yeah, we, we've said from day one, we can lose with this group, and uh, we're not always going to play well. Um, but yeah, we showed great fight, great resolve. Um, I thought we uh, applied an intelligent pressure for the most part. Uh, they got late clock a few times, and we fouled late clock. We, I think we fouled five jump shooters. Um, and then we let Miguel get downhill to his right hand a couple times late clock. I wish we had those possessions back. But overall, I thought our guys, uh, they, they played with more force. I thought Vlad was extremely physical in the paint, which opens up something uh, something unique for us. And uh, we settled in and, and uh, found the right rotations in the second. I thought that Brennan Lori had brought a lot of great energy and, and uh, enthusiasm to the game. And, uh, you know, it was a heck of a college basketball game. I, I wish we had five more minutes. Hey, Coach. How did you feel uh, playing a national TV on ESPN against an upstart opponent like USF? I mean, they came into this game with a 10-game winning streak, so you were playing a hot team on national TV. This is really great for the conference, let alone for both teams. Yeah, this game's great for college basketball, great for our league, the state of Florida. Um, but, but as far as who we're playing, we, we've been on, I think we've been on national television 12 to 15 times already this year. Um, and, and, and so that, that's not it. I just think this is a, it's going to end up being a really healthy rivalry. Um, I have a lot of respect for their program, their players, their staff. Uh, this is just a heck of a college basketball game. I, I wish we could uh, have this one in, in, in Boca this year. I'm sure next year it'll be a, a home and home. Uh, but credit of South Florida, the crowd, the crowd was great. Uh, the, the environment was, was awesome for our game and our sport and our league and our university. So, um, I wish we could have came out uh, on the other side of the, the, win call, the, the, the winning and, and losing side, but uh, proud of our effort, especially in the second half. Hey, Dusty, uh, what was the mood like in the halftime locker room? And then uh, can you just talk a little bit of when you found out about the flagrant foul to start the second half, and was that part of the strategy, knowing you'd have to deal with that going into the second half? No, we assumed that's what was going to happen. We were hoping the game would get loosened up a little bit. Um, you know, their presses and their zones, they're, they're throwing different looks every possession. And if it, it allows you to be stagnant, if you're trying to call organized offense, you can get bogged down. And, and so we, we made a point of emphasis to simply attack. That it, it's just smoke pressure anyway. And, and so I thought we got to the right spots. We got to the middle of the floor. We were able to, to duck Vlad in a little bit deeper. And, and uh, situations where they weren't as organized defensively in the first half, I thought they held their ground well on him and, and kept his, his catches away from the paint. And uh, he played, like I said, with a lot more physicality and second half got deeper. And I thought that led to some, some different things for us. Coach, in that final position before the end of the first half, you went into the zone, got a turnover off that or, or a missed shot, um, and you were switching everything, which it seems like they were trying to take advantage of those switches. It was, was there anything that you felt like they could you could have done to, to kind of stop their shots from falling? Or was it just the luck of the draw for them? Uh, no, it def there was no luck involved. I mean, there, I thought Miguel was, was – going off the bounce at 25 feet. I thought we moved up into a space and forced him to drive it, and he punished us in, 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 that, uh, in the paint late in the game. Uh, but I thought young blood shots, you know, we had a, a couple scattering port blunders that uh, the teams know how to attack switching, and, and we know how they're going to try to attack us, and so it comes down to execution. But his ability to sit down in space at about 25 feet is really, really unique, and, and you could talk about it and you could show it, but until you realize how deep he shoots, and, and, and that's, the, you know, there's a reason uh, he is what he is, and as efficient as he is, and mature, and, and uh, you know, guys like that have a, an imprint on teams, and uh, man, he, he's a special basketball player. He, he's, a, he's a winner. Dusty, let's talk about the play of Victor Golden in the second half. You know, the second half seemed to really ignite him. He was really into it, get drawing fouls and all the energy. Obviously, did your team feed off of what he was doing? You guys were down by a lot, and all of a sudden, you guys kept hanging around. Yeah, I, I don't know if, if he fed off them, he, who fed off who, but we found, like I said, he, he found his, I thought the first 10 or 15 games of this season, he scored really, really well before the catch. And for some reason, it, his, it, the balance of physicality of the game or what, he's, he's gradually moved away from the basket and away from the basket. It hasn't been nearly as effective. So for a half, it was really nice to see him back dominating around the hoop using his gifts. And, uh, and our guys were, were certainly confident in getting him the ball. Coach, 